Rita, first of all, we've been talking an awful lot about The Voice and mm. all the different ways the left is trying to put their thumb on the scale <laughs> to counteract the slide away from, as you always correctly call it, the race-based referendum. That's what it is. Into the yes cap. What's the latest from the ABC? Well, they've admitted that they've broken their own rules. No. Because, oh, well, who would have thought? I mean, it's not just the uh, incessant campaigning that you see masquerading as news on this uh, on the network, but they gave footage, archival footage, to the Yes campaign for their big John Farnham, You're the Voice ads, something they're not supposed to do. They're not supposed to provide that footage for any political purposes, and mm. this clearly is that. So... But, you know, I'm sure it's just an innocent mistake, just that all these innocent mistakes go in the one direction. <laughs> yes. Well, and you Always. know what's else something interesting about that ad too, um, which people were talking about this week, is that in that ad they've got all these historic moments, they've got Bob Hawke, but mm -hmm. there was no Paul Keating and his Redford address. Do you think that this shows that really this is about um, putting Keating on the outer from the <laughs> Labour Party after his comments about AUKUS? Quite obviously. It's very loaded one particular way, that commercial. What's oh, funny about I, that I commercial? Think it's that. I think okay, it's what do you think, oh, Rita? I just think because Keating is a far more divisive figure than a, than a Bob Hawke. Uh, I think it's just uh, they've just tried to keep it as as fluffy and soft and and, and uh, you know just that vacuous surface level. They don't want to go too deep. I mean, James, how can they possibly have the America's Cup? A moment well, that united us all. Yes. Funded by, was it Alan, Alan Bond? And uh, we'll never listen to mind where his money came from. Well, nothing. Read it, read it. What's that got to do with, with enshrining race into the Constitution? Well, it's got I'm nothing gonna... to do with that, but it's got everything to do with Albanese having his historic moment and uh, the feels that he wants <laughs> to generate. I think it's very telling. What's weird to me is they're trying to, you know, convince the younger people to vote yes to the voice, but they choose a John Farnham song. I mean, you couldn't really? get any older Absolutely. than that. Absolutely. And, of course, I mean, you know, the whole idea that, you know, one of the great moments for, um, you know, this whole sort of coming together as a yacht race. That's hilarious, too. But anyway, <laughs> let's talk about California, because there's some pretty nutty stuff going on there. A legislator, Lori Wilson, has given a speech where she talks about who is responsible for kids who may be having some questions about their gender identity, questions which may have come possibly from their teachers. Have a look at this. Parents affirm their children. They have since the dawn of time. Typically, it happens when their um, gender identity expression matches their biological gender. But what happens is when it doesn't, that's when the affirmation starts to wane. That is our duty as parents to affirm our children. Uh, excuse Rita. me? Our duty? So if, if the child says, I, I could fly, I'm going to go up on the roof and just take a leaf, you just affirm it? If they say that, I don't know, I'm a mermaid or I'm uh, a fairy, you, you know, there are children. They are allowed to go through uh, all sorts of uh, changes, all sorts of phases in their life, confusion, but you do not sent them down the path of medical transitioning, which is what she isn't really talking about, with lifelong consequences where they can be left sterile, when they can have all sorts of health issues. And she's saying it's your duty to and do Rita, that. Rita, is what? it really the sinister thing here? This is a politician saying it's your duty. This is how you deal with your kids about these issues. You don't have any choice in the matter. It is the state that determines how you parent around these very tricky issues and these issues which are being absolutely revved up in the schools and kids are told not to tell their parents about it. We do know that for most kids who experience gender transition issues or gender identity issues, most of them do wind up growing up to if be they're gay left alone. if they're left alone. If they're left but alone. this is medicalizing things oh, far too early. You know what? I was the biggest tomboy, and thank God I grew up in an era where you were allowed to be a tomboy. Girls could be tomboys, boys could be effeminate. It didn't mean they were in the wrong bodies and needed to be medicalized, needed to go on puberty blockers or hormones and, and all sorts of other things. James, we think, look at this and go, this is wacky California politics. This is happening right here. We had the Australian reporting, I think now 18 months ago, about a, a migrant family who had their child taken away from yeah. them because she wanted to transition medically, but they wanted her to have 
counselling. They didn't want to go down the path the, of, of drugs and they had their custody removed. The sinister Jennifer part of this law in California is that they're making uh, gender affirmation part of health and welfare in uh, divorce cases. So if you mm. want custody of your child and your child is questioning their gender and you don't affirm it, a judge will now use that as a reason to deny you access to your child. I cannot see that being abused by parents in a custody dispute ever. I don't know where exactly. anybody would get the idea that children could get caught in that particular crossfire. Anyway, uh, well, one more quick thing, too. Fascinating thing here talking about diversity. Uh, you know how Hollywood has all of these diversity quotas now? Well, they made a film set in Norway in the 18th century, which, of course, is diverse as, you know, modern-day Los Angeles or New York City or Miami, but apparently the film wasn't diverse enough for certain journalists. Have a look at this clip here to see just how lunatic this has become and maybe why so many of your films today are being remade into such trash. Uh, this is a cast and a Danish production, which is entirely Nordic. It uh, therefore has some lack of diversity, you would say, as also new rules are implied in what Hollywood. What are you going to? <laughs> uh, sorry, but from the get-go. Uh, from the get-go, there is said some... Okay. Well, first of all, the uh, film takes place in Denmark in the 1750s. <laughs> so it was Denmark, but apparently if you're making a film set in Denmark in the 1750s, Rita, you need to make sure that it has got a big, diverse cast. Tell me, Rita, were there any transgender characters in this well, film? I am absolutely shocked that there weren't ethnically diverse pansexuals in the 1750s Denmark. That was Mads Mikkelsen you heard from there. He's the film's... Uh, director, the film's called Promised Land, and like he said, it's set in 1750s Denmark. I mean, uh, w what do you want? But this uh, reporter, this Danish reporter, was uh, outraged that <laughs> it was just too white. I mean, I mean <laughs> what, but, but this is what we're seeing with so many big productions, whether it's Disney or things that we're seeing on Netflix, where... They are completely dis even when they've got real figures from history, yes. they're completely twisting around their their ethnicity and sometimes even their gender rather than well, just writing new stories. James McPherson, you know, sometimes we see like memes that go around, you know, like a Netflix production of a film about Zelensky played by Denzel Washington. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is past the point of absurdity here, and yet that mentality of that reporter. They seem to actually believe that stuff. Oh, I'm so tired of diversity. But I love what someone tweeted. They said, if you're going to make a movie set in the 1700s in Denmark, make sure the cars are electric cars. Ah, yes. So I thought that was brilliant.